Okay, this video is going to be a short tutorial on how to take the output ortho mosaic from drone deploy and process it, get it all set in QGIS. What that means is projecting it to the relevant projection and clipping it just so it looks a little bit better if we're going to be having this as a deliverable. So we're going to walk through all those steps. First thing to note, um, because we're going to see this later. Uh, the size of this TIFF is about 700, 730 megs. Um, pretty big. Um, also, just so, every, so you believe that this indeed does exist, I'm going to show you. This is, this is the output if we were just to look at it in drone deploy. So, not a, a pretty big area, variable val valley bottom width. Um, obviously, the edges of it reflect just the nature of the flight pattern. Um, and that's what we're just gonna, one of the things we're just gonna clean up. Um, but it does exist. Okay, so uh, the reason I showed it right there is because I'm not actually gonna open it because it's so big. I'm not actually gonna open it up in QGIS, I'm, but I can project it without doing so. So this lives on my E drive. Or er, here we are, Little Basin, Half a Creek is what we are doing. And we are dealing with this right here, um, this, tip, this file. In Q, the project tool is up located, or if you're projecting a raster rather, it's up here under the raster, drop down, projections, and the one you want is called warp. Select that, I will drag it over to the screen. The input layer is the one we discussed. Done. Come on now. I will pause this so we don't have to wait for my computer. And we're back. Pepper Creek. Here we are. There's our big file. Um, sorry, not all there. Open. Great. There it is. Um, don't CRS is coordinate ref, reference system in Q. Don't need to worry about that. Um, we are in NAT83 UTM zone 12 north. So like that. We're gonna come down. I just use the default parameters here. Um, don't worry about any of those things. I'm going to click run and, and then pause this and it might take a little bit. That process took about two minutes. Um, you're going to get this, this little error here. Uh, don't worry about it. This apparently has mostly to do with the fact that you're not saving a temporary file. So I'm just going to go ahead and close it. Oh, that's phone call. I'm going to um, Okay, so this is the same file, just to convince you of it's, that that's the truth. Let's look at it. Looks good. Um, this, yep, looks good. Uh, if we want to check on the properties here, just see what we're dealing with for resolution. Uh, let me come up to information. What are we here? Pixel size is about three and a half centimeters east, which is interesting. Um, so, and we're going to actually change that a little bit at a later step just to decrease the size. Um, either way, now we have a projected ortho mosaic. Still got the weird shape. And you'll notice this little icon here. What this icon is, is temporary, just what it says, temporary layer only. Contents will be discarded if you close. So you're going to, um, so be aware of that. Not, there is not a new file. We projected, but unlike an arc, it hasn't actually saved a file. At this point, we could save this file right now and make have it for ourselves. Then we would still clip it, and we'd have to. And because the product of the clipping or the extraction by mask produces produces another temporary file, we then have to save that one again. And the saving as is a little bit time consuming, not particularly, but you can combine the steps um, into so you don't have to save it twice. So even though this is a temporary file, we can still clip it or mask it. Uh, just like an arc, so we're going to create a clipping mask, uh, go through that. Uh, I'll do that here. This will be very familiar for people who have done it before an arc. It's not that different. Um, but here we have new shapefile. Um, you, it'll bring up this window here. We're going to make a polygon. And we'll call it clip, clipping mask. Um, put it into the right projection, or assign it to the right projection. I'm just going, going to ignore the, the field here and click OK. Great. Um, here it is over here. Add layer project. Shows up. 
um, just so I can see a little bit better as I'm digitizing it, I'm going to change the fill from solid to no brush, which just means empty. So we'll just have a line, you can see that. Um, and now we need to edit this thing. Editing in shape files and cues, pretty straightforward, or at least this part is. Select it and you click this pencil icon, toggle editing. Um, if this isn't on your toolbar, you'll have to bring it up. Um, once you see that, it means you're ready to go. This is the add polygon feature. That's what we want. Up, oh, sure enough, now I've got something. I'm gonna, and I'm just, all I'm, my only, po my only goal here is to make this look a little bit nicer. So as we deliver these products, the raster, or the ortho mosaic that we're delivering looks nice, um, which just means getting rid of those rough cut edges. Nothing more than that. It's not actually a, it's not a particularly functional exercise, um, nonetheless. Um, I'm going to go, go through this quickly and uh, feel free to skip till the next relevant part. So I've just been right, or sorry, no, uh, left clicking this entire time. When you want to finish, instead of double clicking like you do in Arc, you're just going to right click. That will bring up a pop-up window, which you could ID. I'm just putting one in here. Um, don't worry about that. We're not, all we're doing is clipping, so it's not particularly useful. Okay, and as in Arc, you're going to come save for selected layers, and then you click the pencil icon again to indicate you're done editing. Now we have a clipping mask that we're going to apply to this mosaic, um, to this temporary file. The clipping component, similar to Arc here, we're going to go to Extraction and uh, Clip Raster by Mask Layer. Extent gives is the total extent, you know, your easting, northing, southing, etc. Um, so we want Clip by Mask. Input layer is the reprojected, so you can either select it. Um, because the temp file, it's actually only going to be here. It won't be anywhere else in a directory. So we take our reprojected file. We are applying the only thing here, the clipping mask. And here's what we're going to do. We have to select a few more things. We're going to ignore the source coordinate system. Um, we're going to keep the same. We're going to re you know tell it to use the same ETM. Uh, we can ignore that. We can ignore that. We're going to... We are actually not going to keep the input resolution. I'm going to change that. Um, let's see. We're going to skip that. We're going to skip. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we are going to keep all of this. For X resolution to output bands. We are, sorry, my mistake. We're going to change that at a future step. We're going to keep it just there. Um, and that's going to be it. Um, so I'm going to run this tool and press pause. That took a pretty long time, um, about 15 minutes, FYI. Um, let's see if it works. We take off the reprojected, and sure enough, there we go. That's what we wanted, um, just so it looks cleaner. Um, we're not going to, uh, let's see, uh, the only other step we could take at this point that we're not going to take here is if you were stitching two of these together, um, or sorry, 
not necessarily stitching them together, that might end up becoming prohibitive in terms of size, but if you wanted to make them in consistent one to the other in terms of their position, you could geo-reference one to the other. Um, the way you do that is up here in this tool called the geo-referencer. It's really straightforward. When I am needing to do that using other ortho mosaics, I'll do a short video on that. Um, last step anyway here uh, that we are going to do is simply to save what we have. The ones I don't want. Um, so again, you'll know that this is a temporary layer. We To make it not temporary, you come down here to right-click, export, save as. It will bring up this window. Um, TIFF is correct. You don't want to just enter the file name here, you know, raster, whatever you want. Um, you want to make sure you click over here, and this is going to ensure that the full name of the file is there. So what is this? This is hyper Greek. Um, I'm going to do this just for myself, projected just so I know what it is. Um, and I flew this June 16 to uh, 2021. Long, obnoxious name. Uh, and you'll see it populates the full path name. And that if you don't do that, you'll get an error. Um, so you're going to want to make sure you do that. Um, current extent, it's already in the right coordinate system. It's going to save it to that. It's going to inherit it. Ignore that. Ignore that. I'm actually going to change this because I don't think we need a point, a, a three centimeter. This just will take the size down a bit. The file, I've been using five centimeter. If you want to keep the smaller one, you can. Or the bigger one. Uh, this is the next important step in profile. Here, this is, I don't know why it lives here, but this is where we can compress it to make it smaller. I've experimented with a handful. Um, I've had good luck with the high compression. Just take that, and I've been using the default settings. I don't create pyramids in here. It seems like it's fast enough to pan as is, and that is it. So I'll run here and then pause. Um, actually, just a side note, you can see it moving here. Um, this is actually is gonna be done, it looks like, within about a minute, minute and a half, so it's a reasonably quick process. So that finished running about a minute and a half. Um, now if we unselect the temporary file, I can remove that and we should be left with our finished product. So this is it. Um, now if we check this out, properties, we should see these should be five centimeter. Yep. Um, the decision to go three or five, you know, I'll, that can up user's, user's choice. Uh, I, it appears to me that this is, well, absolutely sufficient, it's a little faster to work with, um, and the resolution of this, this is a very small creek, um, if you can't already tell, and five centimeters looks plenty adequate for the sorts of delineations that we are frankly hoping to do. Um, that's that decision. Last thing to look at is just to see how we did file size wise, see if it came down. So we're going to check, remember we are at 740 to start, this is our new one, and it is, um, so remember we did two things. We both compressed it and changed the resolution. And okay, yeah, we're down to less than less than half the size of the file. So that's that's a pretty big deal, I think. So for the, that's why I've been using the compression. Um, anywhere, anyways, there you have it. That's how to re uh, project and clip and compress an ortho mosaic you get from drone deploy and do that in QGIS and have a an end product.